Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to walk you through capitalizing expenditures for land and land improvements. So first of all, let's go ahead and establish land and land improvements and what makes them distinct from one another. So um, when we talk about land, I mean, everyone knows what land is. It's the ground you, you walk on, essentially. Um, and so capital expenditures for land are going to include whatever you pay for that land. So that's going to be common across all capital expenditures, the price tag, right? Um, land, because of it being basically a real estate item, usually has what they call closing costs. So transfer the title, any legal fees, um, that sort of thing. Also commissions that you pay to real estate agents. Um, any of that that you have to pay as part of actually closing the deal on the land or using a realtor to buy the land, um, all of that counts as part of your historical cost of land. That all gets capitalized into your land account. Um, any property taxes or other liens that you acquire. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean that you acquire? Well, what it means is that land has taxes or other debt owed on it already at the time of your purchase. And so to the extent that as part of your purchase, you are now responsible for those debts, um, that counts as part of the historical cost of land because you've, you've taken on that extra cost as part of buying the land. Um, and any preparation for use. So whether you've got to bulldoze some trees, whether you've got to level out some hills, whether you've got to drain some low spots of water, whatever the case may be, preparing that land for use also counts as capital expenditures for that land. Now, you can try to memorize all this, or you can keep the golden rule in mind. Any cost to acquire or make ready for use. That's the golden rule for all fixed assets. And so when it comes to land, the things I've listed here are just the common items that are necessary either to acquire the land or to make that land ready for use. All right, so those are the things you're allowed to put into your land account. But then we have this idea of the land improvement, and it is a separate account on companies' books. And that's very different from what happens with other types of fixed assets. With buildings, there is no separate building improvement account. Building improvements just go in the building account. Equipment, same way. Equipment improvements simply go in the equipment account. But with land, there is a separate land improvement account. Now, what are we talking about when we say land improvement? Well, I'll give you several examples here. Putting on driveways, parking lots, lighting systems, landscaping, any systems related to that landscaping, like sprinkler systems, fences, gates, security um, uh, checkpoints, whatever the case may be. All of that is considered an improvement to the land. You are building something on top of the land, which in essence should increase its value. The reason that these are all tracked separately from the land account has to do with depreciation. Land is the one fixed asset that is assumed not to depreciate. Assume doesn't depreciate. And I don't just mean that from an accounting standpoint. I mean literally doesn't depreciate. Like It is assumed that if you buy a piece of land, the value of that land will not decrease. It will either stay the same or go up. Now, is that true for every piece of land? Well, no, it's not true in reality. Some pieces of land do go down in value. Let's say crime rate goes up nearby. Let's say just economic conditions worsen nearby. Let's say a natural disaster happens, right? Land can go down in value, but the vast majority of land on the planet is presumed to either hold or increase in value. And the main reason for that is because it's a finite resource. There's only so much of it. And so supply and demand, the fact is supply will not go up. Supply is fixed permanently, but demand for land is constantly going up as a result of population increase. Therefore, under supply and demand rules, price of land would continue to go up, right? And so in general, you assume land doesn't depreciate. However, all of this stuff you build on top of the land, well, that stuff depreciates, right? Parking lots crack over time. Driveways get little holes in them over time. Lighting systems fail over time. Landscaping needs to be replanted over time. Sprinkler systems break. Fences deteriorate. Gates get rusty, right? All of that stuff does lose value over time. And so that stuff needs to be depreciated. 
And so just to help with the, with the separation of a non-depreciable asset from a depreciable asset, we track land and land improvements as two separate accounts. Now, of course, the golden rule still applies to these land improvements. Any cost to buy these land improvements or to make those land improvements ready for use would be capitalized to the land improvement account. All right, let's see an example of this at play. So here I say on May 1st, Flyer Corp purchased land for $100,000 cash. The land required $45,000 worth of bulldozing to prepare for use, which Flyer Corp wrote a note for. The land had property taxes in arrears. So whenever you see the phrase taxes in arrears, that means already owed. Back taxes is another common phrase you'll see for this of $10,000. But the seller agreed to pay them. The fee for Flyer Corp's real estate agent was $5,000 paid in cash and Flyer Corp paid additional closing costs of $12,500 in cash. Record the journal entry for Flyer Corp's purchase of land. Now, it sounds like a lot. And yes, it's a giant paragraph that data dumps information on you. But really, if we just break it down one number at a time, it's actually not that hard to do. So um, we are obviously buying land, the actual land, not land improvements here. So we're going to have a debit to land. This is going to be on May 1st. The question is, we don't know what that debit is, right? It's the total of our historical cost capital expenditures, the, the capital expenditures that we're allowed to put into this account. But we're going to have to figure out what the sum total of those are. Now, if we go down the list of numbers here, um, we paid $100,000 cash for the land. So credit cash, $100,000. The land required $45,000 worth of bulldozing to prepare for use. Um, and it says we wrote a note for that. So note payable, 45,000. It says the land had property taxes in arrears of 10,000, but the seller agreed to pay them. If the seller agreed to pay them, well, that's not in our journal entry. We have nothing to do with it, so we could ignore it. The fee for Flyer Corps real estate agent was 5,000 paid in cash. So our cash is gonna go up to 105. Um, and then it says, and Flyer Corps paid additional closing cost of $12,500 in cash. So then our cash goes up to um, $117,500. All right. So there's our total credits. That's all the stuff we outlaid. We outlaid a bunch of cash. We outlaid a, a note payable there. Are all of these things valid capital expenditures for that land? Well, sticker price is a valid capital expenditure. It said that the bulldozing was required for use. So required is a valid capital expenditure. It says that we paid the real estate agent. Well, the real estate agent is part of the purchase process, so that's required expenditure. And we paid closing costs, which are part of the purchasing process. So that is also a valid capital expenditure. All of this is allowed to be capitalized into our land account. And therefore the sum total of that is what we're gonna debit to land. In this case, it is 162,500, I believe is the grand total there. Let's scoot that over to be more of my debit. And that would be the journal entry we would record. Now, just one point to note here, um, the back taxes of $10,000, we didn't deal with them because the seller had agreed to pay them. However, if we did assume those back taxes, in other words, we took responsibility for them, um, that would have also gone into the land account. Another common question I get from students is, um, what if some of this stuff had not been a valid expenditure? Like, for example, and let's just let's just say this as an example, not that this is really the case, but let's say the forty-five thousand worth of bulldozing was not required. Well, if that was the case, you still spent cash um, for that bulldozing, but instead of that value going into land, you would have had basically service fee or whatever you want to call it, 45000 to cover that bulldozing instead of that being capitalized into the, the land. All right, one more land improvements. Okay, So it says on May 15th, following the purchase of land, the company installed a parking lot for 50000 lighting for 20000 a security gate for 8000 landscaping for 22500 a storage shed for equipment for 15000 and an underground sprinkler system for 30000 all paid in cash. Record the journal entry for the purchase of the land improvements. Now, 
land improvements are tracked separately from land. So we are going to debit the land improvement account this day, not the land account. Again, we don't know what we're putting in there yet, but we do know that we are spending a ton of cash here, right? So the question is, um, how much cash are we spending and is all of it allowed to go into that land improvement account? So I'm gonna get my calculator out. Um, and so we had on here the, uh, let's see, we start with the 50,000. So we've got the 50,000, then the 20,000, then uh, 8,000, then 22,500, then 15,000, and then 30,000. So grand total, we've spent 145,500 in cash. So regardless of whether this can be debited to the land improvement account or not, we did spend that much in cash. Now, if we go through the list and just kind of read the items, parking lots are land improvements. Lighting is a land improvement. Security gates are land improvement. Landscaping is land improvement. The sprinkler system is land improvement. The storage shed, on the other hand, even though it's going on the land, a shed is a type of building. That is not land. And so what we're going to have to do here is create a second debit for building to cover the uh, 15000 for the storage shed. The rest of the money, though, however, can go into the land improvement account. Okay. So that's it for capitalizing expenditures to land and land improvements. They are similar accounts, but they are distinct accounts. And it all comes down to one of them depreciates, one of them doesn't, and that's why they're required to um, be tracked separately. I hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.